Year of Tobe, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you're watching the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. I've got a message from Brother Kellen, uh, who is the uh, editor of the David Star Magazine online, and Brother Kellen sent me a link to a particular upcoming uh, conference in Phoenix, Arizona. Now, this particular conference, though, is very much alarming. Uh, it is actually, uh, let's see what it's actually called. If you, if you look at the uh, website, it's www.john17movement.com. And what the conference is about is about, uh, says, Jesus revealed to us that the heart of the Father in John 17, 23, Father, may they be one in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. This is the movement that they have going on. Uh, this conference that's, that's being scheduled is in Phoenix uh, Convention Center in the West Ballroom uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. And there is a number of uh, world-renowned speakers there. Uh, Medio Calisi, I don't know who that is myself, Giovanni uh, Tratino, Bishop Olmestead, Rosa Ella Cruz Man 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 uh, forget it, I can't even say that name. So, <laughs> Gary uh, Kenaman. Uh, Harriet Hill, Joe uh, Tosini, Susie uh, uh, Kranetz, as some of the speakers that they have on there. And what they say on there, they're featuring a special message exclusively for this unity event from Pope Francis. Now, if you watch the, the, uh, the video here that they have about it, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's, it's very well put together. It's called the Celebration of Christianity Unity on May 23rd in Phoenix, Arizona from the John 17 movement. It is spearheaded to bring together all the different denominational Christians from around the world joining back up with the Catholic Church. Brother Kellen also sent me another article there where the Pope says the devil is the one that is trying to bring the division uh, between uh, the Protestants and the Catholic Church. Well, it's not really the devil, it's certainly it is God, but uh, I wanted to share with you something a little unusual for you here. Uh, as you guys know, we are a biblical institute of research. We research all kinds of uh, documents so we can get our hands on. And a little while back, we really began to examine Matthew 24. Uh, we examined it from both the King James Version of the book of Matthew there, that's translated from the Greek language, and we also looked at it from the Matthew's Hebrew Gospel, which kind of gave us a little bit more uh, different view on that. Very interesting to say the least, but again... As I've said before, and I'll point out, we know that uh, the Hebrew Matthew is not, was not canonized in there, but it does seem to be a little bit more authentic. And then, of course, once again, there is the Essene Gospels. Now, I had never myself read the Essene Gospels on, on the part of Matthew 24. And we might have to say, we have to, or we have to at least go back and realize, too, it was not canonized. Uh, back in uh, 300 A.D. Or, or a little bit after that, when they first put the Bible together, when the Catholic Church first come into being, uh, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Of course, we don't have any original uh, documents or, or that this was taken from. But the Essenes, we do have original. In fact, the Vatican, neither has Israel been really willing to reveal very much about what was there, other than the fact that we do know that they were, this was a community that believed that Yeshua was definitely the Messiah. So we do have the ancient documents that are really being tight-lipped on it. Uh, but it was kind of interesting because one of the things that brought my curiosity up was a meeting that my wife and I had with Gershon Solomon, a dear friend of ours in Israel. And Gershon said that the reason why they're keeping it so tight-lipped about what was written in those particular fragments is because it would delegitimize the Catholic Church. He had already gotten information from sources that he knew that they had already discovered that it would definitely show you that the Catholic Church is not a legitimate church. So, but anyhow, there, there has been some ancient documents that have been discovered that were written by the Essenes. And what was kind of interesting in my study there was I actually found the version of Matthew 24, or their version of what they had written that they say that Yeshua said. And what I thought was interesting about it was the 
the interesting accuracy if we were to look at it from a prophetic standpoint. Not to mention, I'd shared with you guys myself that when I was reading Matthew 24 from the King James Version there, when Jesus speaks about, when he says this gospel, when it is preached unto all the world, then the end will come. And the Lord revealed to me, that is actually the two witnesses. Now, I had not read as of yet the Matthew 24 equivalent from the Essenes' point of view. But when I read it recently, I saw that I was exactly on the money on that because in this one, Yeshua goes a little deeper. So, as I said before, and keep in mind, this is not a canonized version of it, but it, nonetheless, as I share with you what they recorded that he said, I think you're going to find very interesting, especially in light of Rome, because it makes it a lot more clear. Let's take a look at this. It says here, And at another time, while Yeshua sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him in private and asked, Tell us, Lord, thou holy teacher of righteousness concerning the end of evil, and that shall, and, and that shall be the sign that we should know of thy coming again. And Yeshua said unto them, Take warning that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ and the truth. Follow me and be saved. See, just like it says in Matthew 24 in the King James Version. But he says, But great shall be the number of false prophets. Uh, excuse me. But, but great shall be the number. The false prophets will deceive. Yea, many will take up the holy name in vain. Now that's God's divine name. As I generally, as a Jewish people say, Hashem, it's the same, I, I believe it would be the same way because as I've said before, we see clearly in Zephaniah that that true ability to pronounce that name is not given until the time. It looks like almost from the time the two witnesses come based on what Zephaniah writes about it. So he says, many will take up the holy name in vain and misuse the meaning thereof and cause great confusion among the people and mislead many. There's definitely a lot of confusion today because so many people are determined to know the pronunciation of it and are trying to tell people that they must know. And, well, you already know that argument there. The meaning thereof and cause great confusion and mislead many. For many things shall take place upon the earth that hath not taken place before. Now watch what he says here the way they record it. Nay, or seen by any generation except those of that generation. Now that got my attention. Because it seems to be that Yeshua here, when, when they record what he says about Matthew 24, he specifically is speaking of our day, which lets us know, too, even more so that Matthew 24 is definitely a prophetic look at the day that we're living in. Because I'll read it again. For he says, For many things shall take place upon the earth that have not taken place before, nay, nor seen by any generation except those of that generation. The modern technology the planes, the war things, everything that we have here. Now watch how he, he covers it, because we already know about the wars and rumors of wars, but watch the way they record it here. For you shall hear of great wars, and also much talk of war, and many will be threatened with destruction. <laughs> That's why I say, when you read this account here, it seems, I mean, it's almost, it makes you wonder why didn't they include it in the canon, but I'm sure there's reasons why they have for that, but nonetheless, this is very evident that Yeshua knew exactly what was going to happen in our age because our age, the war can bring destruction, total destruction. And this here goes back 2,000 years ago. They actually have the original Hebrew document of this 2,000 years ago. Now, it says, but, you be, but be ye not troubled, for many things must come to pass, yet before the end of all evil things. And in those days, the last before the great rest, uh, speaking of the millennial reign, those that have power shall gather to themselves in greed the lands and the riches of the earth for their own lust, and thus shall oppress the greater number who have not. Keep this in mind. 
as I'm looking at this, I'll just share with you the way it looks to me. It talks about the wars and rumors of wars, and they're willing to, to bring about total destruction. Now he says that there's going to be those that are going to, uh, let me just read it again, uh, in those, in, in, and in those days, the last before the great rest, those that have power shall gather themselves in greed, the lands and the riches of the earth. Hasn't the United States warred with all kinds of countries? You know, the other day someone had posted a video on my Facebook page about a, Syri a Christian Syrian woman that was crying out. And she really accused the United States of all the wars that have torn. I'm sorry, she, I don't think she was Syrian. I think she was an Iraqi. All the wars that have torn this country apart and that over a million Christians had been murdered in Iraq. She put the charge at the United States' feet. And she said they came and they stole everything. They came and took the gold, the values of the land. They took the oil. That's exactly what we see. And Americans know the Bush, he didn't do this war just to go liberate the, the, the Kurds. They did it to take land. And who are they really doing it for? It's the Pope of Rome. We fight the Pope's wars, just like in Ukraine, toppling of that particular country's government, a democratic government. Well, that might not be the best government in the world, and no doubt the Russians have their paws involved in that as well, but they did topple that government too. And now, because the Israelis don't go along with the idea of a two-state solution, what have they done there? Created more wars. Why? The Pope of Rome wants Jerusalem and wants that as his own seat. So they create more wars and rumors of wars to force the Israelis to concede to a two-state solution. And taking more lands for what? For their greed. Why? Now there's oil and gas there. Same thing with Syria, Iraq, all around the world. So what does he say again? Let's read it again. I really wanted to sing because I know you guys have not seen this before. You can, you can look it up online. Those of you, many of you guys I know read these type things. You write me about it and... And, uh, and the only thing I can tell you, I, I can tell you we have a canonized Bible. I go by that. But I can't disregard things that are this powerful in prophecy either, though. And in those days, alas, before the great rest, those that have power shall gather to themselves and greed the lands and the riches of the earth for their own lust, and thus shall oppress the great number who have not. For in those days, the many shall be held in bondage. This is interesting. Watch this. But, but yet not in prison. Many are held in bondage, but not in prison. And they shall be used to increase the riches of the greedy. Yea, even the innocent beast of the field shall, shall be greatly oppressed, for every cruelty and lust shall be worked against my innocent brothers and sisters of the great household of God. He's talking about animals. And that is true. Very true. Very sad. Um, indeed, for many shall lust after the taste of flesh and blood shall flow freely as high as the bridle of a horse. If you really think about this now, I mean, like I said, if this is not prophetic, I've never seen anything like it. Let me just share with you what it's, let me, let's look at this again though. For in those days the many shall be held in bondage, but yet not in prison, and they shall be used to increase the riches of the greedy. What were the greedy doing? They're going to take land. So who's he talking about that are imprisoned? It's the military. You know, when I was in the military, I used to always call it legalized prison. Because once you go in the military, you find out quickly you're not your own. And you can't do what you want. You can't scratch yourself, especially in basic training. You ain't going through basic training. You don't scratch yourself. They tell you, we own you. You signed a contract. And I call it legalized prison because you volunteer to go into that. And the entire time you're in the military, you do what you're told. And they're in prison. They're in bondage, but yet not in a prison. And they shall be used to increase the riches of the greedy. They fight the battles for Rome. The United States military is the main military that Rome uses to wage war around the world. Keep in mind, the taxes of the United States goes to Great Britain and from Great Britain straight into the Vatican. That's where the big circle goes into, in case you guys are not aware of that. But then the cruelty to animals, the lust, 
for the, for the blood and the eating of all these animals. If you've ever seen slaughterhouses and the number, and I, and I know there's a lot of people eat meat. I, I'm not, that's up to different people what they do. I'm just telling you, it's sad if you really knew what happens to all these poor animals. And I say that in light of the fact that when God created the animals on the earth, in Genesis, he said it was good. He created all these fellows and tells them to multiply and replenish the earth, and then he puts them in our hands for us to care for them. You know, but as far as this idea here of the blood rising so high, it's because the, the, the increase, and even like for the chicken restaurants and all these type things here, and, and of course you got to keep in mind for the military, all the slaughter. It's like in the days when the, Israel would fight in the battles and stuff, you know, they'd have to carry the livestock with them to feed the armies. But anyway... Let's move on, though. In that time of trouble, no creature of God, nay, man nor beast, shall escape the cruel judgment of that wicked generation. Save mine holy elect under the charge of mine holy angels. Wow. That's something to think about for the rapture itself there, isn't it? For I say unto you this day that a strange Savior shall rule the minds of many a strange Savior shall rule the minds of many. You don't think the Pope of Rome isn't doing that good job on that? Look at this. He's got a special message for the celebration of Christian unity on May 23rd, just like he did when he sent his little uh, guy down there to Kenneth Copeland there. Another special message. He's ruling the world. He says... Save my holy elect under the charge of mine holy angel. For I say unto you this day that a strange Savior shall rule the minds of many, and that generation shall believe not in the evil of the world, but shall judge all evil good and all good evil. That's sad. You're judging the evil good. And, every, and look at the way the churches are going nuts over, over Pope Francis. And if you don't go along with this ideology, they consider you a wicked person. I've been threatened by the Obama administration. I've been threatened by United Nations with my own life for speaking against the Vatican. I've had my friends that are Jewish believers turn against me. Sad. Watch what he says else. For many shall the miracles of the strange God work in the earth. Yeshua calls him a strange God. Why? Because he says that he's the vicarious filia dilia. He, sits, he is the vicar of Christ, the substitute. He claims to be the substitute of the anointed Christ, sits in his seat as God on earth, just like the Pharaoh of Rome. He said many... For many shall the miracles of the strange God work in the earth, and the people shall worship that Savior with much devotion for all hope rest in the God that is not a God, but deceiveth the people of every nation. Every nation in the world is deceived by this man. And he does many miracles. Oh, just wait. It's, it's not even got going good yet. He did, of course, I've already reported, he did his first miracle. He turned turn dead blood to live blood. I can only imagine what's going to happen in the very near future. You know? And if it's not Francis, they'll have another one. Just Who knows what's going to happen? I, th I think it's Francis, though, really. Per that's me personally. But the eternal spirit of all shall send forth his holy messengers, and they shall restore the holy law anew. I told you that when I was reading it from Matthew 24, and all, when this gospel, this evangelia, as it says in the Hebrew, Matthew, shall go to all the world, then the end shall come. I said, that is the two witnesses. And here he says in this one here, but the eternal spirit of all shall send forth his holy messengers. That's the two witnesses. All right? And they shall restore the holy law anew. We already know when the two witnesses come. What did, what did, what did you, Jesus say? 
And, and, and uh, what is it, Matthew or Luke that records that in, in the King James Version, it says that uh, they ask him the question, doesn't Elias, doesn't the scripture say that Elias must first come? And he said, truly he shall first come and restore all things. So now he says these messengers are coming and they're going to what? Restore the holy law new. They're going to bring back the part that was lost over the last 2,000 years because of the different churches and doctrines and denominations, even the Jewish people that have perverted the things that they've perverted. As I read to you the other day in Jeremiah chapter 8, where the pen of the scribe, the wicked scribe, he's changed things intentionally to hide it from your eyes. You know, I already knew that it was in the New Testament. I had no idea that Jeremiah wrote of the wickedness of the pens of the scribe. So that tells us even things in the Old Testament were manipulated. That just, that sad, you have no idea how that saddened my heart to read that in Jeremiah. Anyway, so he says here, watch what he says, restore the holy law anew, which wicked men have hidden by their vain traditions and those that believe not the holy law shall perish. That's strong word. And we know that when the two witnesses come for three and a half years, they'll preach the gospel. It's the one time people will have a chance to repent. I've told you that, guys, many times over. I didn't know this was written there. I said, you'll have that time to repent, but if you don't, it'll be over. And he says the same thing in here. And in that day shall all they that keepeth my law and commandments be hated of all nations for my name's sake. For many shall be offended at my holy laws and betray one another and shall hate one another. For many false prophets shall indeed arise and shall deceive many. That's these people in these churches. Claiming to, to you know, God spoke to me. God gave me a vision. God gave me a dream. I'm, I'm weary of it myself. He says, yeah, I tell you in that age yet to come, the Father's name shall be blasphemed in a manner like never before in the history of the world, greater than even the star count of heaven itself. I believe that. For hands dripping with the innocent blood of my creatures will take up my name in vain and mislead many, and they will follow the ways of the Pharisees and not the true path of the, of the pure oblation. And that's something, remember the message I just gave? Now, I didn't know this was there. I just gave a message to you guys recently about the traditions of the Pharisees. I said, even, even Rabbi uh, Singer says that the, the Orthodox Jews of today are the Pharisees of 2,000 years ago. And I said, they're blind. Yeshua says in the Gospels of the King James that they are blind leaders of the blind. And so if you want to go back into Pharisaic traditions as Jews that are believing the Messiah to be Messiah and you take back up these traditions, you will perish in your sins. There's no way around it. And he says right here, for hands dripping with the innocent blood of creatures will take up my name in vain and, and mislead many, and they will follow the ways of the Pharisees and not the true path of the pure oblation. You know, I think I had a question to ask to me not long ago. You know, I said, Brother Steve, what do you think about uh, this? You know, would they restart the sacrificial services? They may. But you know, let me tell you something. That's not what God's interested in. Yeshua has died for us. And believe me, God would put a stop to it because His blood is what was poured out for our sins. And we must believe in Him. And if you believe in Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, you will be... Pardoned from your sins. If you do not, you will not be pardoned. I don't care how many Pharisaic traditions you want to take up. You know, do you know good? You've got to believe Yeshua the way Yeshua was, not the way you think he is, not the way you want him to be, not the way the church has made him to be. You've got to know who he is. And you've got to believe him in the power that he came in, in the power of the resurrection. He goes on and he says, Yea, many lies will be spoken of me in that age, things I spoke not unto you, nor taught not, for they will lust after much flesh and sin, and their evil will mount higher than a new moon of thy, uh, of thy season, and many will believe and be lost. 
Yea, sheep will, be, will there be, but shepherds uh, few. For the wolves shall destroy the sheep and scatter them about in the north wind, scatters the fallen leaves. For many are the hopes of that age to come. But like the bow of the sky after the rain cometh disappear into nothingness, though great be the Savior, only hopelessness shall reign over the nations. See, though great be their Savior. They think Pope Francis is going to save the world. He's not. Mm. I tell you, better for that generation not have been born into the world. For darkness filleth that age and gross darkness the people where the lie ruleth the hearts of many. Yea, I tell you truly, if man then shall say unto you, Lo, here is the Christ, or there he be, be you on guard and haste not to believe, for there shall arise many false Christs and false prophets speaking the lie against the humane Son of God, and they shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible to even deceive the very elect of God. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret place, haste not to believe. For as a lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For remember, wheresoever the carcass is, there will the vultures be gathered. Now, that was a new way of seeing that. You know, but like I said, you know, I, again, this is not part of the canon, canonized scripture there. So, you know, just however the Lord leads you. But I just, I find this, I find it fascinating in light of prophecy. I mean, this is a document that the originals they have are, is 2,000 years old. And what you're seeing here is a, is a little bit deeper look than what we get to see in the Matthew 24 that we have today. And so, and to, for him to say the things that he's saying about our generation, we see it. It's obvious. This, this is just very interesting. You know, so anyway, wherefore, if you shall say, and, uh, okay, we already read that. For remember, uh, yeah, wherever the carcass says, the, the vultures are gathered together. For these birds eat of the dead and do go, gather round for the feast and know not the living. Know you also, therefore, that the true disciples of Christ are among the living only and are not found gathered round dead things. Amen. For as the days that were before the flood, they were eating flesh and blood and drinking sour wine and marrying for unnatural reasons until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And then one of Yeshua's disciples said unto him, Master of the harvest, please tell us what shall be the sign that we may know for certainty of thy coming. And Yeshua said unto his disciples, the eternal parent has appointed a time and a season for everything, so shall the holy judgment of that age. For verily I say unto you, that age shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. For the wicked heavens of Satan shall pass away, and the evil of the world will pass away. But my word shall not pass away, for my words are law and life and love. And out from uh, my law shall come forth a new heaven that ruleth over the new earth. Yea, the kingdom of mine elect shall rule in peace and gladness in the meek of the land, and wickedness shall be no more found or sought after. Anyway, just fascinating, especially that part about the wars. The, and he said, the talk of war. The, 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 the Savior that will rise up that will lead many astray. Fascinating. Anyway, I, I trust it's a blessing to you. Be vigilant. Very, this is a time to be in prayer like no other time. The deception that is moving all around us, it's everywhere. And he said, they're going to say, lo, here's the Christ, lo, there. Our Christ, Yeshua, has already come. And he already spoke his words for us to live by them. I want to stay as true to Christ as I can. And I know you feel the same way. But I just had to, I just had to share that with you. I was reading through that, and I just thought it would be a blessing for you in light of Matthew 24. We've talked so much about it recently here. And to see uh, a prophetic look at the age we're living in 
it was very interesting anyway. So anyway, I don't know what to say about it. You know, I mean, you can take it the way over the way the Lord leads your heart on it. Because like I said, it's, it's just uh, it's, it's something that's, that's out of the ordinary. But it certainly is a blessing to me to see it, because especially the two part, about the part about the two witnesses as well. I knew that that's what the Lord had revealed to me about Matthew 24, about the gospel being preached to all the, all the world. Then the end would come, and then he speaks of the same. So, very interesting. God bless you. We love you. And hope to see you soon. Uh, those of you, uh, by the way, for those of you that are that will be in South Florida, uh, uh, Brother Paul Begley in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, on May the 6th, we'll be speaking there. Uh, it's only a little over a week away or something like that, so we'd like to meet you there if you're able to come. But... Um, also, though, for the two-day conference with Sister Lisa Tesh, we also have a new guest speaker. Uh, I don't have that name for you, but I'll get that to you as quickly as I can. It'll be coming. Another precious sister there, my wife, Sister Lisa, myself. Two-day conference. We will really be bringing down the house when it comes to exposing what Satan is doing. I have a lot of photographs I want to share with you guys there at that particular conference. That's May 19th, excuse me, June 19th and June 20th. Uh, next month, that's about three weeks away right now. You don't want to miss it. It's in Newport Ritchie, Florida. And uh, I'll have the address and phone number to the hotel there in Newport Ritchie there. Uh, for those of you that have not made reservations as of yet. And from what I understand, there's still, still more time there. They have extended the deadline for being able to register uh, to get a discount at the hotel where, where the conference is at. So just call the hotel or email Sister Lisa Tesh, uh, Lisa Peterson Tesh. That will be on the screen as well, and she can get, get back with you the information about the registration there at the hotel. It doesn't cost anything. Everything's free of charge, and, uh, but we know you'll be blessed. God bless you. And hope to see you soon. Shalom.